there may have been various implementations of Unix operating systems over the years and with its various matured tools over a number of years, it has become very apparent that you can do a lot of things with it. So this is going to be a series of videos commenting on an article that is now well over 10 years old. So published back in, I guess, February of 2012. So before I left on my mission, but still, it's been a while. I'm talking about how Unix can be used as an IDE. Very powerful, and it's much more so now. Newbies and experienced professional programmers alike appreciate the concept of the IDE or integrated development environment, having the primary tools necessary for organizing, writing, maintaining, testing, and debugging code in an integrated application with common interfaces for all the different tools is certainly a very valuable asset. Additionally, an environment expressly designed for programming in various languages affords advantages such as autocomplete and syntax checking and highlighting. With such tools available to developers on all major desktop operating systems, including GNU, Linux, and BSD, and with many of the best free of charge, there's not really a good reason to write your code in Windows Notepad or with Nano or Cat. <clears throat> However, there's a minor meme among devotees of Unix and its modern-day derivatives that Unix is an IDE, meaning that the tools available to developers on the terminal cover the major features in cutting-edge desktop IDEs with some ease. Opinion is quite divided on this, but whether or not you feel it's fair to call Unix an IDE in the same sense as Eclipse or Microsoft Visual Studio, it may surprise you just how comprehensive a development environment the humble bash shell can be. So I have to agree there are a lot of cool development tools or a lot of tools that can be used in development quite easily on the command line. Having done a full pull request, on a repository and having purely used grep and sed for like 95 percent of the editing of files in order to sort out names and things like that let me pull that up okay so here this pull request here so going through various text pointers and if i go through on file changes some of these got edited later on but basically what i was doing is i was looking at text and going through and being like okay i'd have a file open in vim and i would uh, basically look at the content of the text give it a name and then this unknown text i would be able to search for it in said and then basically replace that straight from the command line without ever opening the file and that's how i did a lot of these changes from the command line without even having to go into the file itself i could even grep for the look for the file with grep with this specific pointer and be able to find it and say okay said now do your thing and it would work really really well so you're talking a whole host of changes across multiple files in order to get these text changes up. It was 203, or yeah, 203 files changed in it. And it's, yeah, close to 4,000 lines of code that were edited with mostly grep and said is tools. So the primary rationale for using an IDE is that it gathers all your tools in the same place and you can use them in concert with roughly the same user interface paradigm and without having to exert too much effort to make separate applications cooperate. The reason this becomes especially desirable with GUI applications is because it's very difficult to make windowed applications speak a common language or work well with each other. Aside from cutting and pasting text, they can't share they don't share a common interface. The interesting thing about this problem for shell users is that well-designed and enduring Unix tools already share a common user interface and streams of text and files as persistent objects otherwise expressed in the axiom everything's a file. Pretty much 
everything in Unix is built around these two concepts. And, and it's this common user interface coupled with a 40 year history of high powered tools whose users and developers have especially prized interoperability that goes a long way to making Unix as powerful as a full blown IDE. This attitude, let's, okay. So this whole power thing is kind of exactly what I was talking about because I can take a text stream I can also do a lot of things in it. Now, most GUI applications that run as IDEs are basically one application done by a single set of developers and put together, whereas there are options in a Unix system to have that same interoperability with text streams in a GUI application because you're making a GUI front end, but you're still outputting it to a separate thing. So technically you could have some interoperability between separate GUI application projects that will be able to come together. Much like you see with oh, MPD, for example, having a FIFO file, first in, first out file, that is able to express music visualizations. And then that, that FIFO can be expressed in different applications all at the same time because of that common file interface, which other applications can take advantage of. <clears throat> the right idea. This attitude isn't the preserve of battle-hardened Unix graybeard. Erds. You can see it in another form in the way the modern incarnations of the two grand old text editors, Emacs and VI, GNU, Emacs, and Vim, have such active communities developing plugins to make them support pretty much any kind of editing task, i.e., 10 years down the road, NeoVim. There are plugins to do pretty much anything you could really want to do in programming in both editors, and any Vim junkie could spout off at least three or four that they feel are essential. Install NeoVim, install Telescope, blah, 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 tree sitter, and so on. However, it is often it often becomes apparent to me when reading about these efforts that the developers concerned are trying to make these text editors into IDEs in their own right. There are posts about never needing to leave Vim or never needing to leave Emacs, but I think that trying to shoehorn Vim or Emacs into becoming something that it's not isn't quite thinking about the problem in the right way. Bram Molinar, the author of Vim, appears to agree to some extent, as you can see by reading Help Design Not. This shell, the shell is only ever a control Z away, and its mature, highly composable toolset will afford you more, more than either editor ever could. So five year later edit, new versions of Vim 8.x now include an embedded terminal accessible with the terminal command. It works a lot better than previous plugin based attempts to do this. Even with this new feature, I still strongly recommend the approach discussed in these posts instead. <clears throat> so it comes down to the fact that you've got a lot of plugins that apparently aren't as powerful as the command line options. But depending on your text editor, like NeoVim, in a lot of ways, it does become about as powerful as, oh, the command line terminal. And in some ways, it's still not for some functionality. But you've got a lot of options now with various fuzzy finders and things like that to search through specific projects and all that about it. So I'm going to skip the about the series part. I don't think IDEs are bad. I think they're brilliant, which is why I'm trying to convince you that Unix can be used as one, or at least thought of as one. I'm also not going to say that Unix is always the best tool for any programming task. It is arguably much better suited for C, C++, Python, Perl, or shell development than it is for more industry languages like Java or C Sharp. Especially if writing GUI heavy applications. In particular, I'm not going to try to convince you to scrap your hard won Eclipse or Microsoft Visual Studio knowledge for this sometimes esoteric world of the command line. All I want to do is show you that we're doing what we're doing on the other side of the fence. So, this is kind of a good point, I think, is that at this point in time when originally written, 
Python, Perl, C, C++ are kind of the dominant ones. Java and C Sharp, you kind of see a lot less of being liked even still, but C Sharp more than Java. But C Sharp is still considered Microsoft Java, so it's still bad. But you've got whole IDE setups for NeoVim, for Rust, and other tools. You've got Copilot plugins for NeoVim. I w I've looked into other options for coding AI, but it's interesting to see that you can have all these implementations now and extensions that add to your workflow for programming, and you can still use the same old programming languages, and you've got a lot of power in the Unix command line in order to be able to program in these languages and do it effectively, a lot like an IDE. If you enjoyed the video, then like, comment, subscribe, feed the algorithm, boost the video up, share this video with your friends. If you found it informative or you just want to chat, I've got plenty of places in the description, Discord, Gilded, and what have you. Check those out, and I will see you guys in the next one.